am totally blind, I do not film. I audio record. So welcome to today's auditory video. Alright, I just got this order and I am really interested to open this thing up. And I, I bought a couple of things that sounded like something I would want, but obviously being blind I can't look at the pictures, so... We'll have to see if what I get is what I wanted, or... The question of the hour, is it what I was expecting when I ordered it, basically? I got a, like a thermos kind of thing and a lunch bag. We'll start with the thermos. I'm gonna put this down. If you wanted to sit and listen to somebody breathing into a microphone, this is not, I mean, that's not why I do YouTube, so that you can listen to people breathing. I mean, I'm sure I got the right thing. It's just, is it what I want? You know, is it what I was expecting? Is it what I was hoping for? In this case... two lids. It isn't necessarily quite what I expected, but it was not necessarily bad either. It's a metal... I thought of it as a water bottle, but it's truly, it's a thermos, which... Uh, I was impressed by the way it was advertised as Keeping, frankly, it was the longest lasting temperature gauging water bottle or, yeah, water bottle that I think I have because this thing that I use these days does not keep stuff cold for very long. But the question of the hour is does it fit in my lunch bag? Uh, barely. No, I can't say that that fits. <laughs> no, it doesn't fit at all. It just fell on the floor. Um, this is the kind of thing that you pour liquid in and then have in your... I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing that you might keep at your office if you have a job where you have like a cubby or something and you keep something in it, this would be the thermos that you would take to your office or take to your job site or whatever and just keep there all day. Um, unless you've got a big enough lunch box or bag or something that you can just stick it in there, but that's definitely not going to fit in this lunch bag. It's not bad, but for being on the go, it's not going to work. At least not for me. In fact, I am thinking about this and looking at this, and I, I'm not sure how I'm going to use this. I should figure out how to return it back to Amazon, but I'm thinking I should donate it to somebody. There's like a consignment shop. I wonder if they take things like this. There's a consignment shop next door to a location that helps me uh, from time to time and I'm wondering if they would take this. If they wouldn't then I need to find someone that would because I unfortunately I just can't imagine myself using this. Um, I mean this was not what I expected and it's not going to work out for me. Now to see about this lunch bag. comes in this bag, and if I never open it, there. Once 
once I get the plastic off of it, I discover that a tag connected to it through metal, wait, the tag's not connected that way, the, there's a little keychain thing on it, that's interesting. Um, well, these handles, well, they work as far as, I wonder if there's a strap hidden in there. That's one thing about lunch boxes. I want it to be able to be, well, lunch boxes are just about anything for that matter. I want it to be, I want it to have some kind of strap so that when I actually go to carry it around, it's... So what I found inside of it was paper and paper <laughs> and uh, the the ice pack thing, which is a good thing. But if there's a strap hidden in there, I can't find it. I mean, the easier it's carried, the better. And um, these are frankly described as handles, these straps. There was supposed to be the, well it was advertised as, oh, okay. it was advertised as an external pocket and yeah, now I see the external pocket. It's not much of a cup holder. It's, um, it's, that's not, that's not false advertising though. It said you can like put your keys and your phone and stuff in there and it would work perfectly for that. I can see that. You can shove it on your arm and like have it like that. I wish someone could film me as I'm kind of sort of wearing this, you know, as best as I can. I'm not going to say this doesn't have its place, but it's not quite what I was expecting. Rats. Bottom line, unfortunately, neither one of these things were quite what I was hoping for. Um, that happens when you are blind and can't look at the pictures, and the descriptions aren't as descriptive as what they would ideally be for someone that can't look at the pictures. <laughs> I wonder if Amazon offers the kind of customer service where you can call them and say, look, here are the features I'm looking for in an item. Do you have something like that? If so, can you email me a link where I can just click on the link or as us people who are using screen readers would do, hit enter on the link and it'll just take you right to the website and allow you to add that item to your cart. I don't know if they do that or not, but I, maybe that's something worth checking into because really this is, insulated lunch boxes are one of these things that you can pretty much always find a place for. That thermos though, that all I can imagine that being is a clunky piece of metal that's not going to do what I want it to do. So I'm going to look at, like, like I said, donating it to someone. By the way, as a complete side note, I'm sorry, this has nothing to do with the subject matter of the rest of this video, but I just feel the need to say this again. I've been saying this ever since I got this call center job. I'm working two jobs. One of them is a call center job, which more about that in another video. There's more to say about that, but this is not the video for that. And one that's folding pizza boxes, which I love, but unfortunately it's not nearly enough hours to do anything with. But when I do my call center job, I'm cold calling people who really don't want to hear from me. And I get all kinds of things. Yeah, I'm not interested. Don't call again. Or, I mean, I think that's what comes the most. As my employment specialist and I were role playing in preparation for this job, she played someone that was annoyed that I'd called. And she said, you know, I want you guys to quit calling me. I've told you guys this before. And not knowing any better in the role play, I said, okay, I'm sorry to bother you. I will make sure you get on our do not call list. But then I got started working there and discovered that per our company policy, I couldn't have responded that way.
All I really could have said was, well, okay, I'm sorry to bother you. Have a good evening anyway. I couldn't have filled out a do not call card on her because she did not say the actual magic words. Take me off your list. You know, she could have said, how many times do I have to tell you pain in the asses to stop calling me? Take me off your list, lady. I don't want to hear from you anymore. That would have done it. Or something as simple as, you know, please take me off your list. I get tired of hearing from you guys. That would have been nice, too. In fact, obviously, as a person that's just trying to do their job, the latter would have been nicer to hear than the former. But even the former, with the words, take me off your list, is what would have done it. Cold callers, te <clears throat> telemarketers, um, call center sales reps, I guess that's the official name for them, call, centers, call center sales reps. Depending on what their company policy is, anything less than take me off your list or take my number off your list, take my name off your list, remove me from your list, anything less than that might not really get you off their list. I just had to say that again because ever since I got this job and found out about this company policy, I mean, I've always had a problem with that and... I can't change the world. I can't rewrite the company policies for all companies to make it so that when people say, I get so sick of hearing from you, stop calling me. They could actually take that as a request for what my company calls a DNC, a do not call card. You know, I can't rewrite the policies, but I can spread the word through YouTube about what these callers really need to hear to get the random person that really doesn't want to hear from us anyway off of our lists. They talk about the magic words, please and thank you. Well, when it comes to these call centers and these telemarketers and these random cold callers that are a pain in the butt, the magic words are, take me off your list. For your own sake, I just want to ask you to try to remember to use them. You might actually get less and less calls, or at least one by one, those companies will get the message to never call you again. And with that, today's video comes to a close. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.